All right, welcome back. Creative Programming Week 2. Uh, last time we talked about the basic drawing commands in P5.js, um, how to make shapes and make drawings using code. Um, super psyched to see your robots. That's going to be really rad. Um, this week we're picking up then where we left off and adding some new ideas to our toolkit, the first of which is variables. This is a really powerful idea from computer science that we're going to see over and over as we're writing code. Um, before we dive into some specific examples um, and, and actually doing it in code, it's, it's worth, I think, taking a pause and talking about what a variable is. So we can think of a variable as um, an element in our code that has a name that and has a value attached to it. And that value might be a number or some text, or we'll see later in the course, um, a whole bunch of other kind of cool things. And we've actually already intersected with variables um, in last time. So console.log width and height, these are variables that are built into P5.js. And when I run this, we get the size of the canvas that we created. So these are variables. They change depending on the size of the canvas um, and we can access them by name. They happen to be built in to P5.js, but we can also make our own, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna start here in the setup and just make some kind of um, simple examples together and then we'll see how we might apply this, apply this to drawing. Um, so when we create a variable, this is gonna have um, a couple of basic parts that we need. Those are gonna be the word let, we'll talk about what that means in a second. Then we're gonna have the name of the variable and this we can create, it can be anything that we want within some limited parameter. So for example, we can't create a variable called with because that already exists. Um, we can't create a variable called setup because that's already reserved here. So there's a few things, but for the most part, we can call it whatever we want. Um, and then we're gonna have an equal sign and when we create it, and then we're gonna have an initial, if I can spell, initial value. So let's look at an example here. Let's say I'm 12 years old. I'm not 12 years old, but um, let's say I'm 12. Uh, I would say let age equal 12. So this is creating a variable called age and it's setting it to the number 12 here. And then if we wanna see the results, we can use console.log age and we can refer to it by that number. So now we see down here, it prints as 12. Um, so let's talk for a second about this let word, because this is the one that's a little confusing or just a little harder to understand. Um, I actually like reading, I think the best code reads like a sentence. If you can read it out loud in order and it makes sense, that's really good code. And so I read this line as let age equal 12. And when you say it like that, it starts to kind of make sense. Oh, we're creating this thing called age and we're letting it equal the number 12. Um, let essentially is saying this is a variable. It means something specific under the hood in um, JavaScript, which P5.js is based on. Um, it means something actually very specific that we don't really need to get into right now. You may also see in a lot of examples you find online, this written similarly var, short for variable, equals 12. Um, for our purposes, now, it, it doesn't exactly mean the same thing, but for our purposes, this is exactly the same thing. So don't stress, um, we're gonna use let. It's considered kind of the more contemporary way of doing this. Um, you'll see it in more new examples. There is a subtle difference. We're not gonna get into it here because for our, what we're doing, it doesn't really matter. Once it matters for you, you'll also start to realize what the, why that is important. So that's a simple example. Let's um, also see how we can update variables. So once we've created it, now P5.js knows about this thing called age. And so I can say age equals age plus one. And as we might imagine, now when I print age, it's 13. So it starts out 12, create it up here, and now 13. If we were to forget to create the variable, you're gonna get an error from P5.js and it's doing its best to guess. It does um, say, you know, line nine, it's not able to find this thing here. Age is not defined in the sketch. Um, and so again, this is an error. It's not a bad thing to get an error. It's helpful. It tells you something is going wrong in your code. And in this case, it's telling us that we didn't create it. So we have to initialize our variable using let and giving it some kind of um, value of some kind. And then we can do stuff to it later. 
So this is cool. Um, there are other things that we can store in a variable. So let's take a look at some other examples. Um, the number that we just created um, is a whole number. So this can be positive or negative, and um, it's got a certain range, but it's, it's really, really big. Um, what we can also though create is something called a floating point number. A floating point, oh, sorry, a whole number has no decimal. So an example would be three or negative 20 or something like that. A floating point number has decimal, so we can have parts of a whole number. Uh, and this can also be plus or minus. So an example would be um, you know, 3.14 pi or negative 22.5, stuff like that. And so if we want to create a floating point number, in the case of JavaScript, we don't have to tell it which is which. It, it just knows because we have a decimal or we don't. Other programming languages, we'll talk about that at the end, other programming languages require you to tell it ahead of time. But I can say um, let number of donuts. So if I have 3.4 donuts in my possession because I've eaten 0.6 donuts already, um, we can specify that like that. And so now this is going to print 3.4. Uh, we don't just have to do numbers, though. Uh, one of the cool things, variables can store all kinds of other stuff. So we can store text. And this in programming is generally called a string. And we can do it the same way. So I could say let name equal Jeff. We already looked at strings a little bit in the very, very first coding demo where we said hello world in the console. Same idea here. Um, I need either single or double quotes around this. That's how it knows that this is a string of text and not, for example, a variable name or a command. Um, we're going to look at a couple more examples in a second, but what's really cool then is that we can combine these together into a single statement in console.log. So I can say console.log, my name is, and then use a plus sign, name, and I am age, uh, years old, and I have how many? Let's see, it's a number of donuts, of donuts. It's a little long on this one line, but you get the idea. So now, you can see it prints out this nice formatted text all together in the same place. Pretty cool. So we can use these plus signs to combine them together. I'm combining strings that I'm writing by hand. You'll notice I have a space here. If I don't include that space, it's going to jam those two things together because it doesn't know that I want to do that. Um, I can combine a string with this other string of text. I can combine a number or a floating point number all together. And this is really great if you're making debug messages for your code, um, for stuff that later we'll see when we do text on the screen, that that gets displayed, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. So there's a couple other types of variables that we're going to run into pretty commonly in programming. The next is called Boolean. And this is the like fundamental unit of computers. This is true or false. We can think of this as a one or a zero. And as we all, I think, all know, under the hood, the way a computer is running, it's thinking in this binary, one or zero. And we can have a value that's just true or false. So I can create the variable in the same way. Let sky is blue equal true, because it's true most days. Um, let pizza is healthy is false. And then if we print those, you know, is the sky blue? Oops, sky is blue. Now you'll notice that I need to keep my, um, the case, the capitalization, the same here. Um, typically uh, in uh, JavaScript, Java, a couple other programming languages, it's very common to do what's called camel case here. So the first letter is lowercase and then additional words become uppercase like this. So it's like the humps of a camel. Um, you can do it however you like, but I think it's a good to get in the habit of what's kind of commonly accepted in the programming language. But if we do sky is blue, all lowercase, we're gonna get an error because to JavaScript, um, this is actually different than this. So that's important. You may run into an error because of that. 
So we can do true or false, and we'll see in the next video how we can use true or false statements to control the flow of our program. So that's Boolean. We will, you'll see using that um, in some examples later. Um, and then the last one we're gonna look at today is called an array. And this is a list of variables. So we can combine multiple variables together into a list. Um, and so we do this the same way. We say let colors equal, and then we use square brackets to denote a list. So here, and it's separated by commas. So now I'm creating this um, array called colors. It's got our colors in it. And then we can access specific elements from our list using their index or their place in the list. Now this gets a little confusing. So the first element in our list is element zero. We actually count from zero in, um, in programming, not from one. So this is zero, it's the zeroth, the first element. This would be one, and this would be two. It's really weird, kind of confusing. You'll notice in the little card right here showing where we're at that we're counting from zero in our examples and that we're in week two right now, even though this is the third week of the semester. And it's for that same, sort of like a wink to how this stuff works. Um, so this can be kind of confusing, but let's go ahead and um, print some, some stuff that we can see. So we could say console.log colors. So we can print the whole list like this, and you'll see it prints it in this nice format. We can scroll through. And this is actually a good indicator right here showing us zero is red, green, and blue. And if we want to just access the first one, we can say colors and then square brackets zero. This will give us red. We can change that to be green or blue. Pretty cool. Um, and again, the more you do this, the easier it gets. For now, I don't think you're going to be using lists or arrays very much, but um, we will see this as being something really useful. So we can add elements to the list. So we can say colors.push. And then let's say we want to add yellow here. And then we can print this out. And now we see we've added yellow to this list. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the basics of variables. It's pretty cool. Um, we will see in a minute how we can use these to do all kinds of things like um, change settings for our program in a global kind of way to um, you know controlling the flow structure and stuff like that. But so far it's kind of boring. We're just printing stuff on the screen. Um, let's dive into the next video and we'll see. Oh, no, psych, before you go, one more thing that we need to talk about, which is um, the scope of variables where they are able to be seen by our program. And there's a really good way that we can see this. If we add to the draw, we're not gonna draw anything here for this example. Um, let's do console.log colors. And you'll notice that we get an error. And if you ran the example from, um, from the link to this code example, you'll notice this error too. And you might be thinking, oh, Jeff, did you screw something up? Like this doesn't seem to be working. Um, it's actually on purpose. Again, I think errors are really instructive. They're really, I mean, they can be frustrating too, but um, so what's happening here? Why can't we see the colors down here in the draw? And the reason has to do with something called scope. And scope is where can we see the variable? What, what scope is it exist in? In this case, we've created colors up here inside the setup, which means it's only visible inside setup. The minute we leave it right here and enter draw, the computer just forgets that colors ever existed in the first place. Um, this is called a local variable. And we'll see other examples later of um, even more kind of tight uh, scope, more local scope. But in this case, because we've created it in setup, we can only see it in setup. If we wanted to access colors through this variable here, through our whole program, we would actually remove it from here and put it way up at the top before the setup. So we can put it right at the top of our sketch. And now you'll notice two things are happening. One is we're not getting an error anymore. And the other is that it's printing over and over and over again. Um, the reason is because the, remember the draw loop goes over and over and over. So it's printing it every single frame that it's drawing on the screen. Variables that are accessible to your whole program are called global variables. 
and um, depends on your, your program. You might want to use those um, global variables in some places. You might want a local variable for some things. Um, and generally, I think it'll make it itself pretty obvious to you, but that's a good thing to start like filing away in your brain as you're thinking about um, writing your code. Um, and we'll see a little bit more of that in a couple examples when we start talking about iteration and loops. So welcome back. This is variables in JavaScript. I, I know this example is not that exciting, but we will see some cool ways of starting to make drawings with this stuff in just a second. So move on to the next video and I'll see you there.